Good morning to you. It is daybreak here, and we are happy to have in studio this morning, uh, weekly at this time, from the Mason County Economic Development Council, we're talking with Lynn Longin. And good morning to you, Lynn. Good morning. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. <laughs> How was uh, the Forest Festival weekend from an EDC standpoint? Well, it was hot. I don't know about <laughs> the EDC, but from Lin Long, and it was hot. Yes, it surely <laughs> was. A, it was a hot one, um, but a lot of fun and just brings in so many folks to the community. Yes. Puts a nice little spotlight on it. It really area. does. It was so nice to see. I went up to the car show yesterday, and, you know, I remember the first year they had that, and it was not very big what a couple uh -huh. blocks and wow it's it's really grown. i mean now it takes up the whole the it whole, the whole does area. it goes all the way up to from the um i think it goes from napa all the way up to deuce donuts yeah it's huge so i didn't walk the whole thing i'll confess <laughs> i it was just too hot <laughs> let's talk about the economic <laughs> development of the county we're we'll we'll okay. start We'll start young here okay. as last week four students win business plan competition awards uh, as the EDC of Mason County and the school district hosted the third annual business plan competition. Right. What does that do for kids? And talk to us about you this. You know, thing. it teaches them entrepreneurism. It gives them options. So even if they decide that they don't want to open their own business and hopefully, you know, if they do decide that it's because they've really learned what it is right so it's not it's not for everyone mm -hmm. and so um i think that it's really a good thing to teach our kids entrepreneurism you know we teach them about going to work for someone else but what about going to work for themselves sure sure and and the more education we can put around starting your own business the better and let's start young yeah yeah so don't just go and take your life savings and put it into a business if you're not you know, fully prepared for it. Yeah, it can right? be complicated. It is, and it's a lot of hard work. Mm -hmm. I grew up in small business and family-owned businesses, and you don't have a Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. No. No. <laughs> it's 24-7. Uh, it is. It is. And, of course, my family had a oyster company, so it really was a 24-7 mm -hmm. in the winter. You oh, were getting yeah. up in the middle of the night and going to set in the scows. And <laughs> you definitely learn a lot of good yeah. skills, life yeah. skills. You too. do. You do, and and it's really fun to watch these teenagers, these um, young people. It's and hear their ideas. It's great. Coffee house gives me hope. Survival multiplayer service provider, vintage boutique, therapeutic ranch. Those were the top four students. Yeah. Yep. Uh, who won those things? I, th I mean, those yep. are some two great ideas too. Right, and it's really good. So um, that they get they win a scholarship to Business Week. So uh -huh. Washington State Business Week, which is um, where they go to different, um, depending on which one they do, there's a healthcare one, there's um, a, a high tech one, there's manufacturing, and they're at different universities across the state. And it's a week during the summer where they can get hands on um, simulated training about, you know, running a business in that industry. So it's it, I love the Business Week concept and the fact that we're mm -hmm. doing that. We have three of them. We have good sponsors. Um, the EDC sponsors it. Also the um, Taylor Shellfish and Seattle Shellfish. And this year, so some of the judges, um, they wanted really badly to give another one. Uh -huh. So they actually came in and at the last minute um, sponsored another one. And that's John L. Scott of Shelton and our community credit union. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. So that was really fun. You were just l reading uh, off some of the topics of Business Week and I couldn't help but notice they were close to some of the things you guys talk about during your roundtables. They are. They are. They, they match pretty closely to what our industries are. So even better. Yeah. You had yeah. some uh, two health ones last week. We did. We had two health care ones. We had one up in Allen and one in Shelton mm -hmm. um, held at the hospital here. Good attendance at both. Um, it, it was interesting to see how they differed um, in topic. Uh -huh. So the one up in the North End, the one up in Allen, it was, um, they got more into the socioeconomics around health care and some of the things that are real issues. Uh -huh. um, where in the Shelton one, um, it talk, they talked a lot about the actual jobs and the different businesses that are healthcare businesses, and both were really great, and we got a lot of really good information. So now we'll merge them into one document. Oh, yeah. So I'm really excited about that. Is that the wrap up? Is that the end of the roundtable? That was the last one. Oh, okay. I've got a meeting right after this with um, George Sharp from our um, uh -huh. 
our facilitator, mm -hmm. and we're going to meet and talk about the getting it wrapped up and a draft out there. Wow. Yeah. That was quite the process, I'm sure. It was. Once, you, once it's probably hard to comprehend in the middle of everything, but now that you can look back, and you'll probably come away with some really good ideas. Right. It was. Did I this was start really. In January. Or? Well, yes. Yeah. Yes, it was. I think our first one was actually like February. Yes, but. that's crazy. It's just already done. Right. Yeah. And it seems so far out there when you when you were first talking about it. Right. It was. It was work. It kept us busy mm -hmm. and. <laughs> yeah, it's good. I was really pleased with the, all the participation from the community members. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was just interesting. Yeah. Additionally, what else is going on with the uh, uh, EDCM on the cho website? ChooseMason.com. You can get a lot of good information right. there. Uh, June 17th, State of the Community coming yes. up? Yes. Okay. Yes. We're um, partnering with the Chamber of Commerce, the Shelton Mason County Chamber of Commerce again. Um, here from the Mason Transit Authority, from the hospital, and from the public utility, PUD. Oh, that'll be a good one, then. Yeah. It's usually good. It's usually... I highly recommend people RSVP for this one. Okay. I know a lot of the time they call us the day of and but this one really fills up and when it's full it's full okay and where's this where is it going to be it's up at the hospital and the hospital graciously every year um donates the meals to us mm. so what we're asking instead of charging the 20 dollars lunch fee that we normally do we're asking for 10 dollars, and then we donate it back to the foundation oh good and, and last year we did that and it was it was a really good um participation and Nice to do that. So you can find out information on how to RSVP and more information on ChooseMason.com. Just uh, scroll down and look to the right there. Monthly luncheon, June 17th, the state of the community, two. Right, right. Anything else, Lynn? Just one. Um, just the, um, well, no, there's not, there's more than one. We are really, yeah. really busy right now. But I just wanted to really quickly say that we are working with Olympic Panel Products. Okay. Things are moving along um, at pretty well. People keep asking about it, so we're, we've got surveys out to the employees right now. Once we collect enough of those, we'll start really um, positioning what the rapid response will look like. And so the Employment Security Department, WorkSource, Pacific Mountain, Workforce Development Council, we're all working together to do that, and we will have a job fair. Okay, So great. So yeah. more to come. Similar to the response, like uh, up from from when we heard about the mill closing, yes. where there'll be a liaison able to work with the. Yes, okay. we'll have two peer counselors. We already have that approved from Employment Security Department. Great. We've also gotten approval last week. We, I think it was last Friday, we found out that we did get the approval to keep the transition center open. Great. Um, I've been, I've already been talking about it. It's going to stay open. It's going to stay open. So people think it was a done deal. Well, actually, we finally got approval for it. <laughs> Thank you for not making me sound like a total idiot. <laughs> so the transition center will stay open up at WorkSource, which is a really nice thing because mm -hmm. all of those employees have their own place to go yeah. and um, get help. And yeah familiar faces to get through that's this. right two peer counselors up there so we'll hire two people from there from the mill to to be their liaisons mm -hmm. very good yeah all the information you need about the mason county economic development council is at choosemason.com lynn longen on the air with us weekly at this time good to see you thank you for good coming to see in. you thank you stay cool today gonna be another hot one yes thanks 853 <laughs> here at i fiber one ABC Entertainment News. Here's Jason Nathanson. Oh, this is gonna be good! Not exactly good for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows. The sequel did win the weekend, an estimated $35.3 million debut, but that's $30 million below 